Hello everybody and welcome to The Creative Corner and again we've got another groundbreaking author with us but before we get to him, how you doing Flash? Good, how are you this morning? Pretty good, now I'm just going to go off the cuff here. Alright, here we go. Look, the guy called me Puddle before we went on air <laughs> and it's rattled me and I'm like, I want to talk to this fantastic poet, now I'm thinking of how I'm going to get back to The Flash. So where did Puddle come from there Flash? Uh, I'm not sure, I just recall a story of someone saying that you they used to call you Puddle instead of Ocean. That's true. And so all you guys that are watching this back in New Zealand, you know what he's talking about. However, we're not here to talk about Puddle. <laughs> we're here to talk about some profound poetry from an Australian author, Tom Stadolka. Tom, how you doing, mate? Not too bad. Thank you very much for having me here today. It's an exciting day. It is indeed. And um, always good to start with a bit of humour, even though life can be quite serious sometimes as well. Well, you've been working with us for how long now? About seven or eight months? And have we ever come... I feel like I'm part of the furniture now. Oh, part of the family? <laughs> part of the family. Call the family, but don't call me Puddle or I'll divorce you. <laughs> As Flash is going to find out after this interview. Oh, I've always yeah. loved nicknames and having a difficult name like Stadolka, you can imagine why nicknames come easy to me. So I like Puddle. I like o Indeed. Ocean and Superman. <laughs> Maybe and Flash. don't ever call him that, ever. <laughs> oh my golly gosh. Let's cut to the chase. Let's. Tom, we want to inform these wonderful viewers who tune into the Creative Corner who you are about the book. So we've got a few questions for you. But before we get into the nitty gritty, who are you? What, what's your background? Tell us a little bit about Tom. It's hard to do that because um, I guess all one's life, all my life, um, it's been more about uh, thinking of others, just the nature of things, where the space you're in. Um, so talking about myself is quite difficult. Maybe that's why I like writing poetry, um, to reflect some of who you are in a set of poems. I started in 1976 when I was first uh, in the Navy on my uh, cruise as a brand new legal officer. We were travelling from Suva, Vila, Mackay and Townsville and we were out there in the ocean, in the Pacific Ocean and uh, the ship I was on board, HMS Duchess, had an open bridge which even in the 70s uh, was, was quite rare, mostly they're closed bridges but the open bridge gave you that sense of you were out there with nature and the storms and uh, I guess I've always loved uh, love the weather, the impact of the weather on us as human beings and uh, I guess interestingly enough weather is a very topical subject in this day and age. But where do I start in relation to being a child of refugees in uh, the uh, late 40s when my mum and dad arrived from Italy from the refugee camp there, the United Nations Displaced Persons Camp where my brother was born and uh, I was born in the Bathurst refugee camp in 1951. So it goes back a while now when you're almost 70, that's a long um, history, it's a long time. And um, it's very hard to try to capture that in a few words. And maybe this is uh, at another time where one can talk a little bit more about that history going to different schools, ending up uh, in different spaces around the country and overseas. I guess I always had that hankering for adventure and uh, maybe that's why I joined the Navy in 1976. And uh, maybe it was also an escape to some extent from my past. That's another possibility. Maybe we're, we've all got that in us a little bit, especially um, you know, when you're in your teens and uh, uh, looking at uh, what's around the corner and they always said, join the Navy and see the world. Well, um, as a legal officer in my 20s, um, that was uh, where, I, where I ended up. And 20 years later, I moved into a new career, that of mediation. And uh, I guess peacemaking um, was something even while I was in the Navy, was close at heart. Um, being in a military environment, uh, promoting uh, goodwill 
and um, ensuring that people work well together as an alternative to, heaven forbid, uh, moving into a, a warlike situation, which of course the military is always preparing itself. But being a legal officer in the Navy um, was quite different to being a traditional military operational officer. And uh, I guess my personality was able to flourish in the naval environment because I was dealing with people, thousands of people in different shore establishments all around uh, Australia and spending some time in the UK and time in, um, in America as well during the Gulf War. And you, even, was, were you, uh, you were serving in the Navy at the Gulf War? I was um, in the Navy. I was attached to the American uh, Navy on the eastern seaboard with the Atlantic fleet. I didn't actually serve in the Middle East, uh, but it was an interesting time to be attached to the uh, American Navy and the Atlantic fleet. And uh, then um, I had a few more years in the Australian Navy back in Sydney and Canberra and uh, chose to move into mediation. So I, I guess that was where my true calling was where Australia was starting to move more and more into alternative dispute resolution as a way of solving conflict as an alternative for people to go to court um, because the cost of going to court and the emotional strain going to court, mediation always seemed to be a, a better fit uh, with my philosophy on, on life I guess um, which was peacemaking, peace building and uh, supporting people in conflict and trying to find a middle ground for people to move out of conflict, um, if at all possible. It's not always gonna work, but at least it's uh, highly, I think, to be encouraged um, to try to get people working together, working collaboratively. And That's one hell of a legacy. <laughs> That's probably more than enough. <laughs> no, 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 I mean, like, when you're, when you're... This is why I love poetry. I mean, when I got into the publishing industry, my uh, following education, um, one of the things that I gravitated towards was poetry because the poet, the creative behind um, that form of artistic expression just comes from the place you'd never pick. And I'm sitting here listening to this, and I, I, you know, I knew you'd done the Navy, I, knew you, I know you're a mediator, but hearing you articulate you know, your... Uh, connection to each and it just ties into legacy then at the end of the day uh, you're all about peace and the funny thing when, when we've worked together over these last few months it's like you've got permanent smile lines on your face you can actually see the like I know you're getting old in years you said you're in your 70s but you know that almost that, almost, <laughs> almost but that permanent laugh lines Tom <laughs> these things have been been generating for like 50 60 years and when you've worked in, in areas where there's a lot of conflict and in some cases aggression um, to be in a constant conscious state of finding joy must be challenging um, and poetry is a great way to express that and get that out and yeah I'm, I'm, in, a, I'm in a bit of awe you haven't done that to me before flash ask me a question <laughs> <laughs> so That's very, very kind, Ocean, and your encouragement and uh, Jason's encouragement have certainly um, made a bit of an unreality become a reality, making the impossible, imp making the impossible possible. And that's in one of my poems. It funnily is, enough. isn't it? So, funnily enough. <laughs> so tell us about this book that we have here today, the reason why we're here. Tell us a little bit about it. Life's an adventure and this stage of life to have moved from a simple humble poem in 1976 to have almost 50 poems uh, produced covering uh, love and life and death and the future and the past and, and hope and staying positive and staying um, passionate about what you do and about connecting with people from every walk of life remains hugely empowering in a selfish way for myself, funnily enough. 
um, but to then see that people are actually gaining a benefit or, or enjoying reading some of the words um, that just flow very quickly um, is enormously uh, rewarding and, uh, and the nice thing is that I've already written 15 poems since the end of last year and my next book, just in case I run out of steam, instead of having almost 50 poems, we might just go for a mini version of 20 poems <laughs> and then I can get my second book out there. Not at all. I think what's exciting about that is, you, you know, you said um, the first poem from 76, 1976. So you've got all these poems from your whole life, um, but now it's, it's starting to get infectious, I guess. Like, Every time I talk to you, every time I, I, we're doing something on the format or the cover design, you, you're telling me, oh, I've, I've written another poem, I've written another poem. So it's, <laughs> I, for me, it's fantastic because um, you're really starting to get the ball rolling, you're really starting to find um, this creative side of you, you're really sort of starting to nurture that. Um, and I think it's important because people really do connect with this. Like, uh, I had all, all parts of the team, you know, especially the editors who were working closely with you, um, love your work absolutely love it because it's so topical and it's so there's that bringing i think it's a breath like you expressed it before it's just that that moment of in life mm. we don't get that a lot anymore i think that's why poetry sort of really starting to to come back and, yeah. and and i've had authors say that to me is that oh poetry is dead and i'm going actually no quite the opposite i mean in the uh late 90s early 2000s yep there was a big downturn on poetry and i was right there when we had this amazing indian poet that we published a book for back home and the work was fantastic but that it just wasn't getting picked up uh, and that's when we discovered that you know poetry is on a downturn however over the past say four to five years it's had a huge increase and a lot of that has to come down to the means in which, which it's delivered now naturally, you can, we will never get away from the printed book, that's always going to have value. But we've done the e-book, we've recorded the audio book. I have been pushing for the last seven months to get Tom in front of a video camera where he's performing these poems because he has got this amazing ability to articulate the emotion in a poem when he reads them. And we've got a poetry jam coming up later in the, in the year which you're definitely going to be standing on stage with. Uh, so the means of delivery of these poems connects on a more centred and human level than ever before. Uh, and that's why I feel there's been a resurgence. I know I'm going on a bit, believe me, we've got more questions for you, but the interesting story around how these poems were selected was quite um, intriguing. So I want to share that. You good with that, Tom? Mm, All right. Thank you. All right, so Tom had submitted a whole lot of poems to us and we had to go through and, and cull some of them, select the ones that we felt were suitable and that could be put under um, uh, sections and groups. One particular day, uh, myself and Flash had to head down to northern New South Wales, uh, which was a four hour drive, maybe? Four and a bit, I think, it yeah. ended up being. To take some books down to an author who lived in the middle of nowhere. And uh, we thought, well, you know, and you'd done no work with poetry before at this point in time, eh? So we thought, okay, well this would be a great time to introduce the poetry to Flash, but, but also we could critique the work and, and come down to a, 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 a sections and, and a group of poetry we would publish. Uh, the whole drive down, we were reading Tom's poetry. Flash was reciting them, uh, then we'd stop, we'd connect on an emotional level first, and then we got brutal, then we culled some. But that was the mission, the drive down, four and a half hours. And then, then interestingly enough, and this is why I love what we do, we go down, we drop the books off, we hang out with this author for an hour or so, and then we head back, heading back to Queensland. And in fact, I think I was going on a cruise the next day. I was, yeah. It was just before Christmas. And I got this phone call, and it was a lady called Linda Henderson from uh, Sunshine Coast who, uh, who owned a bookstore up there called Autumn Leaves. Remember this? And here's, I'm driving the car and we're having a good time. Me and Flash just had lunch. I think I just did push-ups in, in a cafe or something. You did, we did a, yes. We had a challenge going on at the moment. So it was an amazing day. 
And um, here's Linda ringing me up going, oh, hey, Ocean, how are you? You're busy? No, 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 just driving back. Well, I'm here with a few people. And, you, and she was there with Bridget Street, I think um, Edna Richardson was there, and you were there. Remember this? And they rung up to say thank you, to say thank you for the work that we've done in helping them bring their creative expression to life and just to wish me a Merry Christmas and stuff. And, you know, I'm not lying here, I was sitting there just so emotional crying and driving the car and that's when the puddle formed at my feet if we want to write off the joke at the start of this interview but um, that comes from a very connected and expressive place and, and this is for me where storm clouds, storm clouds and silver linings were birthed and I learned so much and I still learn so much in working with creative people like that so I'm um, thank you for giving us a call that day it's a real pleasure so that's what I learned through my story what did you learn through writing these poems Tom? Um, perhaps a greater understanding of uh, our own lives, my own life and myself and those around us and recognising um, just the impact of many people around me and uh, I can't believe, you know, it's quite a selfish uh, response to um, have had the benefit of so many amazing colleagues, friends, teachers, supporters, family, my wife, my mother and the children and, and my father. Um, just a greater sense of uh, who we are, what life's all about, the challenges, the stresses, the pain good stuff as we said before making the impossible possible um, even thinking of uh, one quote in the poems there about Einstein adversity introduces a person to themselves and I think that applies to every one of us who has just even in a short life short life long life it doesn't matter um, that exposure to um, what one is, what's meted out to one, to us individuals as a society, as a community and how we can stay connected. Through this process, through this book, what I've learned, especially yours, is how entwined and how synchronous um, a lot of things were. Like, we were always finding that through your, your process particularly, yeah. weren't we? Yeah, like um, exactly. finding the blurb, writing the blurb, the title as well, how we came across that, um, the meetings that we had, there was always just things would just pop up like this, there was always these strange connections in the background. Um, and for me what I really like about your book is how you pay homage to everybody, that's well, probably not everybody because you have had such a rich and full life, but you know you pay homage to your children and your wife. Um, your mother and your father as well, whose art is, is in there and features on the front cover as well. And um, friends and colleagues and professionals that have helped you or, or, or changed you or morphed you along the way. And I think, uh, I honestly believe that's why um, people connect with this because it's such a heartfelt book. It's so, so raw, you know, it comes from such a beautiful place. So that's why people are connecting with it. Tell us some of the feedback that you've had from uh, people that you've shared your poetry with so far? Well, it's been very gracious and uh, special and kind and the words are very uh, overwhelming with uh, encouragement and understanding and passion and compassion and love for what I've written and it really puts you into a, into a good, happy space and um, I feel enriched and supported by um, well, people like yourselves, um, family members as well, outsiders. Quite surprising, some people have said just the kindest things. People who um, I think are quite critical or quite 
tough uh, and quite uh, and very talented and very well educated for them to respond in a way that um, um, has given me inspiration, I guess, to to keep writing. I mean, I'd write anyway. And the funny thing is, when I was at primary school, at prep school, I couldn't write any of the essays. I think I... lacked the confidence and... Um, I guess it was all part of growing up in a refugee household and being sent to a very posh school. Um, so uh, there was a the potential there and the reality of being an outsider. And maybe that's why there was sometimes a lack of confidence. Maybe. I mean, there are many <laughs> reasons why a young kid lacks in confidence. I guess the question is, is that does that confidence get gained does it increase as you go through life due to you being able to express yourself creatively? I think so. And well, also you know. working with people and, uh, and being part of a, a beautiful wave and a stream. Think of a beautiful... Um, Not a puddle. ...country stream. <laughs> Some puddles. Puddles are good. Let it go. <laughs> I'm not going to let it go. Let it go. Some puddles are good. And, uh, and then it was funny. I just need to interrupt you for a minute. <laughs> so now you're going to sing the song out of Moana. And Moana actually is Māori for ocean. So we're bringing it back out of the puddle, back towards right. the ocean. Right. Tom, I'm mindful of our, of our time. Absolutely. And there's a couple of things I, I certainly want to achieve before I kick Flash's butt for calling me puddle. Um, one of them is that I'd like you to read one of your poems to the audience. Thank did, you. did you have one in mind? Um, yeah, maybe two short ones. Two short ones? <laughs> she was. Give me a title of one of them, please. An Ode to Kindness. The floor is yours, my friend. Written on the 18th of February, 2015. It is like a painting, a portrait or sketch of a special warm smile and the person within a beaming, kind and gentle smile and spirit. A gift to share and a generous token to warm others' less happy hearts and souls. Others who might struggle to shake off their sad and stressed thoughts. Others who only feel that life has dealt them a tough hand. That smile traverses all and confronts pain and loss, anger and stress trials and tribulations. Never lose that smile and that special inner glow. Very, very cool. Very cool. Laugh and the world laughs with you. Oh, now this is so apt for you, Thomas. The floor is yours again. On the 24th of June, 2016, almost two years ago now, keep that grin on your chin and you'll be right, mate. Said to me the other day by an old timer, who, passing by, has seen a thing or two in a long life. Keep smiling. I think my dad said that on many an occasion. Laugh and the world laughs with you. Cry and you cry alone. Well, that's an old one. Great smile on your dial in a wild crocodile. Fun, good humour, kills the tumour, beats any rumour. Love and laughter, it's the best medicine. Despite the odds, the challenges and the stress, and sometimes the pain, go forward, onwards, and forever upwards. The stars await. That was fantastic. And I can't wait to see you on stage <laughs> really performing them at that at full capacity with a captive audience. Thank you, Ocean, and thank you, Jason. Well, we want to thank you for coming and sharing. We knew that there was parts of there, and we'll talk about this after the cameras go off, but um, there were parts of that interview that were a bit tough, yeah? Yeah, life itself. Life itself. Well, you are a testament to joy in life, Tom, and it's always a pleasure to be around you. Thank you very much for coming and having a chat to us about this fantastic new book. It's been great to be here today. Thank you. 
this by Jason. Okay. Thank you, Jason, very much. And and thanks to you guys. Thank you. And for all you guys that want to go and get a copy of this profound book, that is the website on the bottom of the screen right now. Stay tuned to that website because very soon Tom will be performing live somewhere in the southeast of Queensland. Thanks for watching The Creative Corner and we'll see you next time.